Number 1. China is leveraging the coronavirus crisis for diplomatic gains. As in March China became the first major country to recover from the coronavirus outbreak that spread from the central city of Wuhan, its officials kicked off another campaign to heal its tattered international image. President Xi Jinping held a flurry of phone calls with world leaders to promise aid. More than 170 Chinese medical experts were dispatched to Europe, Southeast Asia and Africa. State media outlets flooded the internet with photos of Chinese masks arriving in 100 countries and stories questioning the pandemic's origins. One month later, that campaign has yielded mixed results for China. In many cases, it has outright backfired. In Britain, a parliamentary committee on foreign relations urged the government to fight a surge in Chinese disinformation. In Spain, the Czech Republic and the Netherlands, governments announced recalls of Chinese masks and testing kits after large batches were found to be defective, undercutting what China sought to portray as goodwill gestures. And on Twitter, Chinese diplomats have not only spread their country's message, but have gone on the counterattack as well. They publicly feuded with the Brazilian president's son and his education minister, who accused Beijing of seeking world domination by controlling protective equipment supplies. They tangled with Iran's health ministry spokesman, who questioned the accuracy of Chinese epidemic data, and lashed out at a Sri Lankan businessman who criticized China's epidemic response. Number 2. What the workplace stands to gain and lose in a post-coronavirus world. When the COVID-19 pandemic winds down, it will have left an indelible mark on the workplace. Already, millions of people around the globe are learning to work from home and figuring out how to stay productive and connected as they do it. Paid sick leave in countries like the U.S., which never mandated it before, has become a front-burner issue. More employers than ever are talking about mental wellness and are understanding now that work-life balance has always been a facade. More telecommuting, according to FlexJobs, remote work has grown 91% over the last decade, and, given the contagious sensitivity of the coronavirus, it looks like this will only become more commonplace. Increased reliance on tech and less on travel, when you take into account travel's impact on global health, the workforce may not rely on travel as heavily in the future. Number 3. The case for re-regulating the airlines. Ordinarily, airlines should not need help. They have recently enjoyed some of the most profitable years in their history prompting Doug Parker, the American Airlines CEO, to announce in 2017 that the company wasn't ever going to lose money again. We have an industry that's going to be profitable in good and bad times. But business decisions, including spending 96% of their free cash flow over the past decade buying back shares, have left them deep in debt, with limited cash on hand in this time of crisis. Number 4. The tech industry will recover faster from coronavirus than we will. China's workers are gradually heading back to work, nearly two months after the COVID-19 pandemic. Consumer electronics, from smartphones to laptops to flat-screen televisions, was perhaps the first industry to feel the direct impact of the novel coronavirus that causes COVID-19. Foxconn, the company that assembles the world's iPhones, resumed work at its factories in Vietnam and mainland China. Samsung's smartphone factory in Gumi, South Korea temporarily shut down after workers tested positive for the coronavirus has since reopened. Number 5. Coronavirus has slashed global emissions. Can it last? One of the most striking effects of the global spread of COVID-19 has been the reduction in pollution from nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. Millions of people around the world have virtually stopped traveling by car, airplane, or even leaving their homes. Factories are shut down. Manufacturing is grinding to a halt. 
air pollution has dropped significantly. The waters of Venice are clean once again. Air pollution is dropping as planes are getting grounded. Emissions from coal combustion are falling as industries are shut down. Domestic energy use rising, commercial use is falling, further reducing emissions. We can now meet our Paris Climate Accord goals sooner. Number 6. Globalization brought us COVID-19 and will bring the tools to fight it. The cause may have been the soft export of tourism, two early cases in Rome were Chinese tourists, or perhaps the luxury goods industry, which imports Chinese workers along with Chinese raw materials in order to ensure final products are made in Italy. Globalization connected the whole world together and hence spread the virus globally within a small span of time. Globalization will again help to create the cure and spread it globally. Number 7. The World Health Organization makes a case for itself. The World Health Organization, WHO, had a plan for this. If only somebody had listened. In 2005, about 15 years before the coronavirus emerged, the Global Public Health Agency adopted a revision to a set of regulations that had guided its approach to disease control and prevention since 1969. In the new legally binding framework, 196 countries committed to face together any future illness or medical conditions, irrespective of origin or source, that presents or could present significant harm to humans. Under this new system, countries agreed to strengthen their public health capacities and notify the WHO of any such illness in their populations. The WHO would be the centralized body for all countries facing a health threat, with the power to declare a public health emergency of international concern, issue recommendations, and work with countries to tackle a crisis. Faced with the sudden and deadly spread of COVID-19, however, the world largely refused to follow these guidelines. Countries imposed travel restrictions against the WHO's recommendations. Some refused to share their data with the organization. Others banned the export of medical equipment, even in the face of global shortages. Number 8. How COVID-19 Could Change Fashion and Retail Nobody really knows what the world will look like on the other side of the COVID-19 pandemic. The only certainty is that it's bound to be different. The crisis has already ushered the global economy into a recession and seems poised to leave its mark on how consumers live, how they spend their money, and even how they dress. Fashion, in fact, is one of the businesses most vulnerable to disruption from the outbreak since it relies so heavily on discretionary spending. Experts may not always agree on exactly how the pandemic will change different aspects of the industry, but the consensus is that it will, with many large-scale shifts that were already underway accelerating in the upheaval. Number 9. Coronavirus will change sports as we know them. The COVID-19 pandemic has upended all areas of life, and sports is no exception. Every aspect of sport has been affected, from the athletes themselves to media coverage, in the simplest terms, there are three main income streams for sports leagues, broadcasting, sales of media rights, commercial, sponsorship and advertising partnerships, and match day revenue, ticketing and hospitality. Sports will happen, but there won't be any physical crowd to cheer the players, live broadcasting. Number 10. What scientists know about COVID-19 immunity and can it help us fight the pandemic? Scientists only became aware of SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus that causes COVID-19, late last year. Most of our immune systems, meanwhile, have still never heard of it. For now, the millions of people who have been infected with the coronavirus have to rely on their bodies rather than a vaccine or targeted medication to fight off the virus. The good news, evolution designed the immune system to do just that. 
The bad news, its response isn't always predictable. The immune system is complex in its own way, and it varies tremendously from person to person. This makes it hard to know how and when to intervene and when it's overwhelmed.